Shaun of the Dead kind of set the precedent of uh, bringing a little more horror into the, the comedy. Yeah. And then also, um, Shaun of the Dead was really, to me, one of the first like horror buddy comedies. And uh, what mattered was really the affection you had toward the, the two main characters, the leads. And so it, it essentially, I mean, it's a romantic comedy. And even the advertising for Shaun of the Dead was a romantic comedy um, uh, with a high body count or something, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, and essentially, um, you know, I, I, didn't, I, w I won't say I wanted to um, emulate Shaun of the Dead, but I was really using that as a precedent, even in writing Tucker and Dale, and to try to create a love story alongside this, this sort of over-the-top, gory comedy. Um, and integrate really the most important thing for me was to have that these these two characters were really lovable characters and it was a you know it was a buddy comedy so yeah I mean I think Shaun of the Dead kind of maybe was a bit of a uh, defining moment I think in in the world of horror comedy uh, and it set the ground I think to try to do something like Tucker and Dale. Mm -hmm. How much input did you give the actors when you were working with them? A, a lot I mean um, <clears throat> But I, I wouldn't say, I mean, we st the first day we all got together, we discussed where we were coming from. Did you yeah, we had it one day. Uh, but we spent the whole day really working on their backstory, where they're from, uh, you know, what Tucker and Dale's relationship was throughout their lives. Um, unfortunately, you know, Alan's like a Juilliard actor. He's a really trained uh, professional. And, and Tyler's been working his entire life as an actor. I mean, People have seen him come and go, but he's literally been working since he was a teenager. And I think they were both really enthusiastic about the process because um, a lot of directors just are more interested in shooting, and I was very interested in working with the actors um, coming from somewhat of an acting background. Uh, I just, I, that's my joy. I take so much, uh, I get so much pleasure in uh, working with the nuances of a performance. And so we spent a lot of time just saying, look, everything has to be real for these characters. This is over the top, it's, it's big comedy, it's, it's ridiculous what's happening. In some ways it's a farce, but from their POV it has to be totally real. And when it wasn't, you know, I'd get approached by both of them saying, this doesn't make sense, they wouldn't say this line. This, this one word, we gotta cut it, this doesn't work. Um, and whenever something wasn't working, we, we did, we cut yeah, it out. Yeah, change the dialogue. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. If something was a little bit off or, um, but it would be a collaboration, like we would talk about it and usually we'd come up to something, uh, come up with something that worked better. And then there's some lines in there that, you know, I just thought were really funny, but maybe they didn't work. Like there was a line where Dale, when he discovers one of the dead college kids, he goes, God damn college kids. And he used to say, why don't you go kill yourselves at school where you're supposed to? <laughs> and I thought that was really funny, but then, Tyler had this point, like, Dale wouldn't even know that. Like, that's information he wouldn't even be aware of. And it just didn't feel like him. And um, so he ended up saying it, but then when I, when I was editing, it, it was true. It kind of bumped, it was funny, but it bumped me out of the, the moment, and it made me feel like Dale wouldn't say that. So it's really tried to remain true to that, um, their characters primarily. How did you come up with the idea that, mm -hmm. you know, first couple of college kids died away is so, like, accidental that it's kind of... Well, yeah, I mean, the... It's funny as well. <laughs> you know, I mean, the, I co-wrote the script with a, a friend of mine, Morgan Jurgensen, who we went to USC Film School together, and um, we had written some other stuff together as well, uh, which didn't get made, but this was the one we got behind, and we were vibing in a room and talking about you know, funny ideas, and one of them was um, a kid sort of Fargo-esque, or, or bringing back Fargo, but a kid just running to try to get somebody accidentally falling into a wood chipper. And, uh, and then another one was just focusing on the POV or the, the misconception of the whole situation, and having uh, Tucker running around the corner, chainsaw over his head, uh, as, running as fast as he can toward a college kid, but away from bees and just playing with the whole uh, POV thing. So those were some of the first ideas of death, and then we just had to work them into a script in a sort of realistic way, or as realistic as we could get to. Um, but the, the film, I think, gave us a lot of leeway as well, because the, it, is, um, it is a bit of a, of a farce, and, uh, and so we could push the limits with, of acceptability and believability, I think. Uh, I mean, it's a tightrope that you're walking with uh, this kind of comedy of errors in terms of figuring out, particularly with reversing the roles of the 
stereotypical villains being the heroes and the stereotypical heroes, etc. Uh, I wondered, um, how did you find that? Uh, were there any complications in turning these antagonists into protagonists and vice versa? And how did you maintain that tension? Yeah, I mean, it, it was always uh, a problem. And, and tension was one of the problems with the film. And I mean, maybe, it, you know, I basically had to give up on some tension because you're seeing both points of view. And so you're, there's no enemy. There really is no killer in the film. And once Who is you, the evil? Well, the yeah. evil to me is just a point of view. It's just the idea of um, of prejudging something. Um, it may be that may be a little highbrow, I think, but it, it is a fun title for me in that there is the evil is only sort of demonizing the other. It's that thing that human beings do sometimes, where they misinterpret somebody else as being evil, whereas really. Uh, they, they're just not seeing through that person's point of view. So the film, to me, the film's always been about perception, and uh, the evil is just having a perception that limits you from, uh, from, from stopping the violence. Um, you know, I mean, not to get all high-minded, but I, we were kind of writing this at a time uh, in, during the Bush administration when all this sort of, this, you know, it, it, Chad was kind of this mini George Bush to me. He was so determined that his opinion was right that he could never see uh, another perspective other than his own. And uh, so, I mean, there were a lot of sort of grander themes we were pulling into the farce, but ultimately it's, it's just meant to be comedy, so I tried not to get too on the nose with it. How long were you writing it then? Um, well, that's a good question. We, we wrote the first draft of the script in about, um, about three months from the... Uh, conception, maybe three or four months. Uh, but then it took me three years to get financing. So every now and then between other jobs, I'd come back and I'd be like, is this script really worth shooting? Because, you know, it was impossible to get the financing. And then you start to wonder. So I'd go back and I'd rewrite a couple scenes and then go get another job, you know, ma mainly as a producer on music videos and stuff. And then, and then um, yeah, so I got to tinker with it for a while. So how did you get the financing? Well, we uh, begged and borrowed and stole, probably. <laughs> but uh, we found an Indian, uh, Deepak Nair, who's one of the producers, uh, found an Indian investor. And then uh, we combined that with a UK investor and then used some of the tax credits uh, in Canada and shot in Alberta, Canada. And, um, and then we, we were able to put it together for a pretty low budget, but not like an ultra low budget, like a low budget film. but. Not that, three million? Like, yeah, about, about $3 million, yeah. And where did Deepak come from? How did you get him attached? Um, Deepak was Thomas Augsburger's partner. They worked together uh, as producing partners on things. And, and Thomas um, got the script from a friend of his within the, um, within the Hollywood community that like, people liked the script, they were laughing at it, but they, nobody really thought it was a movie. Like people kept telling me, I'd go on meetings and they were like, love your script, really funny. Not really a movie. But uh, maybe you'd be interested in doing a music video. <laughs> so, so I was pretty determined to, um, to make a movie out of this thing. People kept telling me not to. And, and it's very funny, because now that we've made it, everybody keeps asking me, wow, this is, such a, this is such an ingenious idea. How come nobody's ever thought of it before? Well, the script's been out there for three years trying to get made. You know? And not only did nobody think of it, nobody wanted to make it. So um, it, it is funny, it is sort of a lesson in, in sticking with your gut about something and not listening to all the naysayers. So it, it's interesting what you mentioned about like writing during the Bush years, because I don't know if you've seen the new Straw Dogs, mm. the new movie, but it, it, I mean, it shows like the, these rednecks, mm. as they've, been, they've been shown before, like the evildoers, but they're like mostly like as a product of like mm. the radical wing of like America, you know, like with prejudice and with like, religion and everything. So I don't know how do you see that because you're trying to subvert the rules yeah. and some of the people are just trying to use the same rules but with different tones. Right. I don't know if you, and then I don't know if you think that you, you still like these horror movies, the new horror movies that are pretty brutal, mm. or, you or you think that they need more humor, like your movies? Well, I mean, look, there's, there's movies for all kinds of people. I'm not going to say broadly, like, horror movies need to be one thing or another. I think all kinds of movies need to be out there. It's just I have uh, a pretty, kind of a more sort of a human comedy about life, and I think that... Um, tragedy can be hilar hilarious, and, um, you know, I mean, I, I think there's too much, for my taste, there's too much 
uh, serious. It's sometimes I watch a horror movie and everybody's taking themselves so seriously in a horror movie and everybody's so dark. Like, no, I, you know, I used to work as a, an EMT and I, I was a mountain guide and I've been around, unfortunately, a lot of trauma. And what happens when somebody gets hurt is you're very serious for a minute, you focus, and then afterward, everybody unloads and usually it's through humor and people are just busting totally inappropriate jokes because human beings need to laugh about tragedy. And, um, and so I think there's a lot more room for horror and comedy um, than I think a lot of uh, producers and studios generally think there is. Was there any uh, big kill or, or gag that you wanted to do that you weren't able to pull off? Um, there's, I had to pull about 10 pages out of the script uh, in order to make our shooting schedule. And uh, <clears throat> we had a whole, we didn't have any big kills because they were kind of, each one of them leads to the next step. And so the only thing I could pull out was this huge chase scene where when Tucker and Dale come away on the truck, like Chad jumps on it, and there's like this battle sequence as them racing through the woods. And um, I had to pull out some of the, the finale, really, uh, and, and lower the stakes on it, and <laughs> shoot it in a much smaller place. And, um, but I really kept the, the hilarious deaths in place. So. Did you plan on directing from the beginning since you first started writing it? Well, no. I mean, I always planned on being a director, but it's always been like, how do you get there, you know? And uh, uh, one of the routes was like, fine, I'll just write a couple scripts and try to sell them and make a living. Uh, unfortunately, that wasn't working <laughs> so well. And so I initially spec'd out Tucker and Dale. We sent it to all the studios. We tried to sell it, um, but it didn't sell. So after that, I started meeting with some other directors who wanted to take it on, and they were like directors that had never directed a feature before, and they're like, dude, I love your script, man, I want to do it. And then I started to realize, well, wait a minute, like, you've done less than I have. Like, I, I don't want to give my script to you. Yeah. And, uh, and so then I talked to my writing partner, Morgan, and I said, well, you know, if, if you produce it and I direct it, why don't we just go make it ourselves? It was literally this meeting we had like in a parking lot after being rejected like the millionth <laughs> time trying to get this thing together. And uh, we just kind of said, yeah, okay, we're gonna go make this movie. We're, we're driving down the street and we look at each other like, how the fuck are we gonna make this movie? <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know, it's just, it was just sort of dogged determination. You know? 